Hi everyone, it's Atiksha from Simple Crowdfunding and in today's video we're actually talking about the Gallup project that's brought to us by Red Banksia. Um, this is an equity raise that's currently on platform and today we're going to be talking about the planning elements, what the project is about, the projected returns, the learning elements and it's also an opportunity for you to meet the team behind the project. So just to get started, the first thing I want to point out is um, the risk statement, which is at the beginning of the IM, and everyone has the opportunity to download the IM and go through this in detail. Please make sure you read the risk statement ahead of investing. Um, this will give you a sense of what the position is with regards to investing through platform. If you have any questions at all, then please reach out. There's a forum on the platform um, against the project itself, or you can raise questions by just calling the simple team. So um, just before we get started, can I just basically ask um, the, or the people that we have on the call today, um, we have Cal, we have Ron, and we have Joss. Can I just ask the three of you just to say hello briefly? Hi, my okay. name's Joss. Uh, Cal, over to you. I'm Cal, Cal Shelton. Hi, everybody. Ron Davis, nice to meet you. Right. Okay. So um, just to get started, who would like to talk about the opportunity? Yeah, I'll kick things off and go first. Uh, so this is a bungalow site. So um, as you can see from the picture there, um, bungalow house and the strategy that we're following is to replace this house with two uh, semi-detached houses. So you can see in the picture, there's a house next door. It's got an additional floor to it. And uh, we're also looking to put accommodation in the roof as well. That's the high level strategy. Um, the planning that we're going through um, is through print development as well as full planning. So it's a multiple application approach. The investment that we're looking for, the minimum we need to raise to, to kick off this project is 280,000 um, and maximum of 310,000. Minimum investment from investors is 5,000 um, and that would equate to one share and the SPV is purchasing the asset. And um, the return on investment we forecast to be 37%. Um, we have multiple application process that strategy, like I mentioned before. So there's actually three potential outcomes um, and we'll go through that in later slides. It's a one-year project. So we're, pur we're purchasing it in January uh, 23 um, and we have funds to purchase it already, but uh, we're using the crowdfunding platform to raise the equity to have investors uh, invest in the deal alongside us. Thank you. And Carl, this type of um, project is not new to you, is it? You've done these before, haven't you? Yes, that's right. So we have a site under ownership at the moment that we've got the planning approved uh, to, it's an existing house that we have plans to extend and split that into two, a pair of semis as well. Um, and it's in in a local council that we know very well, Croydon, been operating there for a number of years. And uh, with multiple applications in, and uh, we know the planners and we know what they want. And this is this is right up their alley. So we're very confident in, in our approach and our strategy. Thank you. So then moving on to the investment summary, um, can someone tell me about the, the numbers, the high level numbers for this project? Yeah, sure thing. I'll take this one as well. Uh, so we're purchasing at 545,000. And uh, it's unconditional purchase. Valuation came in at the at the purchase price. Our estimated GDV on the development, 1.33 million. And the planning summary there is you see the applications that we're going for. Um, so the ground floor rear and first floor extensions are under pit development. We then have full planning to convert that, the extended large house into two units. Um, and there's also an application to extend into the loft as well. Uh, the project time is 12 months and we're also adding or offering a learn while invest. And so that is going to be some webinars and site walkthrough as well as updates as the project progresses as you'd expect for, as 
uh, as an investor to receive. Thank you. Um, the GDP refers to the two semi-detached houses, doesn't it? That's correct. Yes, it does. Perfect. Thank you very much. So um, I know for this opportunity, there are three potential um, alternatives in terms of how this can go, depending upon planning. Can you talk to me about each of these options? Do you want me to jump in there? Yeah, I'll, uh, oh yeah, I'll pass this one over to Ron. He's our, he's our planning expert, so <laughs> best to take it. Yeah, okay, so starting with high, um, so extending the bungalow under permitted development, add another floor and also a ground floor rear extension. Uh, we've already secured both of those permitted developments so that that we, we have the comfort that we can we can add that additional massing. Um, we've then got two planning applications. One of them um, extends further beyond that massing that's available under PD um, with a first floor rear extension. Um, and, and a wraparound extension, including the uh, the massing where the, the garage is currently existing. So that would be the high, the, the medium um, essentially copies the massing, which is already secured under PD. Um, so the only difference between that and the PD scheme uh, is a slightly different roof, which is um, more in keeping with the pair of semi-detached houses next door being a, being a hipped roof um, and uh, splits it into a pair of semi-detached houses. Um, and then the low is the permitted development scheme, which, as I've just mentioned, we've we've already secured that. So we're safe with the low um, return, which, uh, yeah, we're projected projecting a profit from that scheme already. So the, the deal is already safe in that regard. Thank you. So then moving on to the property details, we've got some information. Um, so the properties in Croydon, which we've talked about. Croydon is um, a sweet spot for you, isn't it? Why is that? Yeah, absolutely. So we've been working in Croydon for three, three and a half years now. Um, we've done a number of applications, um, 10, 11, 12. I've, I've lost count, to be honest. Um, this is just around the corner from a permission that we secured last year um, uh, at Crest Road, uh, 55 Crest Road. Uh, which was for four houses in a rear garden. Um, so, yeah, as I say, we've been working in Croydon for a long time. Um, they've slightly changed the type of development they're looking for, no longer looking for flats uh, and, and quite as intense development as they were looking for before. They're looking now for, um, I mean, we, yeah, we've heard from from the planners themselves that they that they don't like bungalows, they don't see it as an efficient use of land, and um, they, they want more family housing. So that's that's what's pushed us in this direction. Perfect. Thank you very much. So um, with regards to the project costs and returns, um, the three scenarios, the high, medium, low that you talked about earlier on, um, can you just run through these at a high level, please? Or Cal? Again? If that's all right, I took yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> apologies. Okay. No, no, no worries. He's better with the numbers I have, than I am. I should have asked the numbers guy. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, as as we've said, the high, medium, low. Low is um, extending under permitted development, which we've we've have consent to to go ahead with. So, um, we've got that locked in, and we're going to be buying that in place with that planning in place. And then the medium and and high outcome is all about getting the split of the the, the large house into two units. And then it's a matter of um, just the extension sizes. We've got a a, a smaller a side extension and back extension in the medium, but also a full wraparound and the high um, is, sorry, is, is the full wraparound in the high. So the numbers are based on um, each outcome. You see the bill costs are going up for each scheme because there's more internal area that, and, and more space is being built. Professional fees are going up for each just because of the additional um, consultation that we're going to have on, on each of those. Um, and still also increases with each because of the um, additional internal area, which impacts the sill, the sill price. Um, I suppose um, on here. Sorry, Karen. sorry, go for it. Um, what I was going to ask is, with regards to the build costs, you factored in a contingency in each of those, haven't you? Yeah, that's right. So we we baseline at uh, two hundred and twenty pounds per square foot, and mm -hmm. we add an eight percent contingency on that. And uh, we also then refer that to our builder and, and make sure that they're okay with it. We actually, our builder, we've got a good relationship with, he shares 
he's shared with us his cost model. So essentially I've taken his cost model and I, and I, I have my simple, you know, 220 pounds per square foot, but then I check against his cost model, make sure he's okay with that as well. Um, and then get him to price it up when we we see that the deal stacks up. So he's okay at each of these numbers. Um, he, he, he backs them. We've got a, um, we've got quotes for each of these. Um, we haven't obviously got him under contract yet because uh, we haven't purchased the site just yet, but he's ready to go once we give him the word. Um, and in terms of the experience of building with him, uh, he's built a house for us up in Tottenham during the pandemic when, when material prices were going crazy. And again, it was a, he quoted 800, so 189,000 pounds and it came in at 194. 3,000 pounds. So yeah, we were obviously very happy with that result um, when it could have blown out easily. So yeah, we've worked with him and quite a bit now. That's one of the schemes he's done recently. And, but there's, you know, trust, trust his work. Um, another point of contention, I think people might pick out is finance costs. The financing that we have in place is, is, is being agreed. Um, terms have been agreed. Uh, we've, we've got, we're going to be buying on a bridge and then going to a development loan. Um, our, the interest rate won't be changing on those. Uh, it's with the same lender and uh, terms have been accepted. So those uh, financing costs uh, are comfortable costs that, that we, are, we have confidence in. Um, and, and with regards to the projector's return for investors, um, each scheme has its own planning, sorry, not each scheme, the low, you already have planning for, which is why um, the projected return on that is um, set at the 2%. The medium and high has some element of planning risk and the projected returns actually um, accommodate for that, don't they? Yeah, that's right. So I think um, we're showing the low here because in reality, I don't think that is a potential outcome. I think we would go back to investors that want to invest in, in that are investing in this deal. And we would, if, if we had a negative response for whatever reason, um, we know the planners and the system and, and uh, we've got a good relationship with them that we would probably would go back and, and adjust, uh, amend and, and kind of work with them to adjust for what they want to see. Um, but like we've touched on before, we're very confident that this is what they want in in Croydon and um we don't see it being an issue and we, we see obtaining our planning permission very shortly after uh our completion date which is set for 13th of January so we expect to receive the planning permission in January um but like you say we still reflected the risk in there with our return to investors um and uh yeah we think it's appropriate given that there is a there is a level of uncertainty there because we don't have the final word yet Absolutely. Thank you for that. So then moving on to the finance stack, um, could you just run me through the, the charges and how what the waterfall is for each of the, um, the returns? Absolutely. So as I said before, we've got um, our bridge in place, which is the first charge. Um, so you can see that there, that, that value is not changing. The Construction costs, uh, uh, which would be under the development loan, the same lender, uh, still a first charge. It's based on the planning that we get. So the value there changes because it's up to a percentage of the GDV and the GDV is obviously dictated by the planning that we, we achieve. So that, that will adjust. And then we've got our second charge, which will go to the lenders. Um, so in equity investors will get a charge on the property um, as well as having shares in the SPV. Uh, and you can see the, the minimum amount, which is raised there. And we are, as a developer, going to be filling that balance. So any shortfall we cover, um, I think it's worth noting that we've already invested quite a bit into this property. And um, we are, we're the most at risk. So in terms of the waterfall and who gets paid, or if there was a loss on this one, who, who loses first, uh, we are the loser in, in this deal uh, up to the value of what we have invested. So if there is a shortfall or, you know, if there is a loss of 19,000 pounds on the low side, if that was to occur, we would be losing the 19,000 pounds and the investors would be getting their money back. And then the bank 
so it would be the bank and then the investors because they're first and then the investors second so um okay but so just to clarify with regards to the waterfall um the crowd investors will be paid their capital ahead of the developer equity yeah okay that's correct thank you um moving on to gdbs so um in terms of looking at the market and determining the GDPs, can you just tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, I'll take this one, guys. Um, so we've been speaking to agents on and off since um, <clears throat> midsummer on this one, and clearly the market has changed since we first uh, came across the Gallup site. Um, the GDPs that are in are GDPs that have been discussed with agents since the mini budget and since the market has shifted. Uh, we are aware of that. We basically have a uh, web scraping mechanism that brings us all the um, bungalows that come up on, on the market and right move. And we're watching the changes in local prices in Croydon and talking to agents about it. Um, all of the GDV, GDVs that have been used to average out what is in the figures in the IM have been taken since the mini budget. Uh, we've seen the changes take place in the last two weeks um, and the GDV actually represents the, the latest checks we've done have been in the last 10 working days. Um, we've actually had one that is a lot higher that's in there that we've ignored um, that comes in at one and a half million. She's absolutely adamant she's right um, and actually she owns a branch of estate agencies in the area but we have discounted hers. Uh, it would have pushed our GDV up and if she's right we'd be delighted. Uh, but we didn't think it was a good idea to have it in. Um, so we're being cautious is the point I'm making. We are very aware of current market conditions and we are ignoring agents that we think are telling us what we want to hear. Um, so we've talked to two local specialist high street agents and two land and new homes, one of whom is a Croydon specialist and one of whom is a regional, well, they're the biggest player in the area countrywide. You know, they're arguably the biggest estate agency in um, the country. And we're in touch with their head of Southeast land and new homes. So that's the way we've gone about that. And uh, yeah, we are cautious on it because, you know, it's it's a, probably one of the three biggest variables in our profit and loss. Thank you. Thank you for that, Joss. So, and there's obviously information um, which will, will leave people to read for themselves in the IM itself. And then you've obviously provided um, comparables again, which... Um, investors can read at their at their own leisure. Um, can you just talk us through the project schedule, the estimated project schedule? Yeah, uh, happy to. The uh, so here I've put it in in weeks duration, and um, as I think to uh, where where are we on this schedule? We are. I think we're kind of just just started into the complete completion stage um, and towards the end of the planning, mm -hmm. uh, the full planning. So I'd say we're, we're close to week 10. And, um, and then for the build, working off uh, what our builder has told us, as I mentioned before, we've got a good relationship with him and he's quite confident in the build schedule. Um, six months, he thinks is plenty of time. Um, I think... In terms of the schedule that we're working to, the the real the real line that I think we need to kind of I suppose look at or, or gain confidence in is the exit. Um, Josh just mentioned what's going on with the market, and um, where our strategy is to try and sell these off plan. Um, you know, we want, to, we want to get marketing happening early. We want to really try and be on that. Um, so as soon as we complete, we're going to be working with our architect to get some three D imagery done, get some get a lot of uh, Kind of mock-ups done of what the finished product will look like and then work with our with our agent that we want to sell through and really try and promote that product and um you know really tr just basically want to get on that because i think once we start the project that's where we need to you know, switch focus to and we've got confidence in our builder but the exit is something we need to we'll, we'll be working I, hard on can i just chip in here please um th there's two important points to note here with regards to the build and the uh, sale which are two things that are um, not 100% under our control. Um, on the build side, the Gallup is a is a relatively level site with easy road access. Okay, this is not a complicated site. So there are sites that we look at where you look at the build cost and the build schedule, and there's a lot of assumptions going on. Uh, at the Gallup, 
clearly there are assumptions, but these assumptions are stuff that have been repeated on site after site on after site in suburban London. Um, and so it's very unlikely that there are hidden nasties in this bill because it is such a vanilla site. With regard to the exit sales, we've been talking to agents as I've been talking about earlier about GDVs. These agents all talk to us about GDVs because they want to sell our site. That's obviously why we discount the higher ones because you know there is a risk they tell us what we want to hear. But they are saying to us, you know, can we start talking to end buyers about this now? Obviously, they can't talk about it now because we haven't started the bill. That would be ridiculous. But the point is that they're all there waiting for us to instruct them on the sales side of things. So we are like a lot of developers, you know, we have agents who are our ready exits and it's up to us to choose who we think is the best. And they claim to be able to sell off plan. Personally, I'm skeptical of any agent that says that apart from extremely large sites, but it is something we're considering. And we will be looking into all of this the day after we complete. Thanks. Thank you. And um, it's a 52 week project, which we talked about already. And actually, you're probably already at week 10, um, as you've already mentioned. So there's another 10 weeks on the end of this, isn't there, in order for it to be a one year project for investors. So there's an extra 10 weeks. Is that correct? Yeah. Exactly. Sorry, can you, can, can you just clarify that to me, Atuksha? Yeah, so it's a 52 week project overall. Yeah. For investors, we've said it's a 12 month um, investment, but because we're already 10 weeks into it, or there are about, yes. yep. there's actually a 10 week buffer at the other end, isn't there? Uh, yeah, if you want to look at it like that, sure, there is. It's, it's a 10 week project, a 12 month project for us um, exactly. the investors. Theoretically, it should be a little less. Yeah. Yeah, but that gives another 10 week sales time if required. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so thank you for that. Um, then we've got um, images of the property itself. If you, I'm going to just scroll through these. If you want to talk about any of them, please jump in. I'm very happy to have that conversation. So we've got the existing floor layouts and the proposed images um, for the high build. Um, for the, the title split, we've got um, additional layouts here. All of this is available um, in the uh, took, 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 Sorry, I, I'd like to jump in here. Yeah. Uh, between the medium and the high versions, by the way, what wasn't clear in the text earlier uh, is that there's an additional bedroom um, higher okay. at upper levels. It only talks about the wraparound being the difference between the medium and the high mm -hmm. in the earlier slides. But the big difference as far as valuation goes is that there's an extra bedroom um, on the um, Ron first floor or second yeah, floor? Sorry, the, I mean. Yeah, second floor. Yeah, so that's what the valuation difference comes from, uh, as much as from the extra square footage, because extra bedrooms are extremely valuable, and I don't think that was clear in the earlier size, just because it was set out in textual format, not in uh, a sketch, uh, and that is really where a, a potential extra piece of noise profit could lie. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so again. Investors, you can you can basically take your time and have a look through each of the, the floor layouts. I know that um, the team have basically offered to have conversations if there are questions. Um, so and, and that offer still stands, so that's not a problem. And then we've got the floor layouts for the low. So talking about exits, can you just tell me what the exit options are? Um, I'll take this one if you like, Carl, uh, and chip in if you want to uh, cut across me by all means. Um, so, the, I mean, the choices with any new building, do you try and sell off plan or do you sell the finished product? Um, we'll have we'll listen to what agents have got to say about selling off plan, but um, it is more appropriate for bigger sites um, and also where a developer can point to an existing site they've got on the market for sale with finished products and say, right, there's a finished product. Here's one's around the corner. Here is one around the corner we're building that'll be on sale in six months. I suspect our best option will be to put them on the market the day you can go through the front door and look at them, but for agents to talk to people in advance about them uh, as an upcoming product, but not for them to be technically on sale. That's my personal view. I'll hear 
I will listen to anything agents have got to say and take their advice on it. Um, I we're in a very sweet spot. Okay, we're in small, relatively affordable by London suburban standards, um, family homes. Uh, we're not trying to sell flashy flats. We're not trying to sell ma massive mansion style properties. Uh, we are in exactly the kind of product that suburban London desperately needs. From that point of view, you know that's a very strong card for us. Uh, and so getting ourselves ready to go on the market as soon as it's available means you've got a lot of um, buyers who desperately need these sorts of homes. Um, so I think you want to hit the market with all guns blazing, if you know what I mean. You want it dressed, you want it looking good, you want it available for them to buy and move into as quickly as possible. Um, and there aren't many of these things around. Too many people have gone for flats in Croydon and there's a, um, a bit of a glut of them. And there is um, a desperate need for these family homes. So mm -hmm. our exit is um, selling it to those families that need it. There are people who buy and rent these things out. That is not our market. We would consider them, but that is not our market because they will always look to push down the price. And that is the opposite of where looking, what we're looking for. Thank you. Um, and then there's information in um, the IM about your company experience and also the team experience. So um, can you just run me through the briefly um, in terms of the company itself? What are your sweet spots? Where have you come from? Why have you gone down this route? I know you've got some pretty cool tech as well. So it'd be good to sort of just talk about that. Um, and just give us a bit of colour about the company, and then we'll talk about the people behind it in a second. Do you mind if we did this the other way around? I'm going to quickly explain the people, and then I'm going to let Cal discuss the company, because it, it's his baby, and he knows it better than anyone else on this call. But the point about um, the four of us working together is that um, uh, Cal and his colleague Sam, who's not on this call, are accountants, so we've got a very good sort of numerical underpinning to the business. And then uh, Ron studied um, planning and has been a, a planner ever since he left university, to my knowledge, Ron, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I met him because he basically helped me overturn an appalling planning decision in, in Dulwich. And he we succeeded on that, where we defeated the council, in inverted commas. Uh, and it's very unusual for a small development firm to have a, a planner working in-house full time. And it allows us to uh, appraise sites like, extremely fast, extremely effectively. Uh, I'm just a traditional developer who's been um, buying, renovating, developing and doing new builds in South London for about 12 years. Uh, and so it's a good gel of different types of people. Uh, we work with an, um, one architect on a repetitive basis. He's not part of the team technically, uh, but he's done almost all our planning applications. And as Cal said earlier, we've got a contractor we work with on a regular basis who we work with as individuals outside the business and we're working with now inside the business. So it's a sort of it, it, it's a good balance of the different skill sets, I suppose, is what I'm trying to make. And I think that's the most important thing is, you know, when you're looking at us as a team, are the individuals actually capable of delivering what's in the IM? And I think from what I've outlined, it's clear that we can. Um, in terms of what Red Banksy does as a business, and it's sort of slight difference to other ones, I, I'll let Cal take that because really that's what he's managed to produce. For sure. Yeah, thanks, Jones. Good summary. Um, so Red Banks, yeah, we, we, I mean, just quickly conceptually how we started, we were looking for backland plots, um, looking to intensify urban intensification um, by going after residential houses with a, a large side return or a big garden. And uh, we did all our direct marketing ourselves, uh, direct to vendor, and we were securing sites under option. Um, and we're still doing that, but we're also now looking to buy sites where we can see that we can do that um, through a very um, confident planning strategy, which is this bungalow strategy. And so now we're also buying sites where we, we know we can deliver a good scheme in still, still doing residential urban intensification and um, we can share that profit with investors. And um, that's the business plan that we're kind of looking to deliver over the next 12 months is working with simple crowdfunding get investors in to want to work with us and have a share of the profits that we're we're creating through the strategy and um, and deliver a rinse and repeat model. Thank you. Um, and again, 
there's a lot more information in the investment memorandum. So people will have the opportunity to read about your backgrounds in more detail. And as always, ask any questions they may have. Um, I'm going to move on to the Learn Whilst Investing. So you're bringing a learning element to this project, aren't you? Um, and it's an opportunity for investors to um, learn about your expertise and actually going through the planning, the build, the conversion process. Um, why are you bringing this to the, the crowd? So the Learn While Investing is ultimately the, under the business model of what we're trying to achieve for this next 12 months in, in delivering these schemes is we're looking to partner with people that want to get to know us. And we want to, we want to, we want our investors, we want to know our investors and we want them to know us. And um, we want them to gain confidence in us by seeing what we're doing and you open, like let them look under the hood and let them have a look and share what we know with them, help them learn um, what we do. We'll hopefully, um, yeah, give give more confidence and credence to what we do and um, show that we are a professional outfit that can deliver these schemes again and again. Thank you. And you will be providing um, development updates as well, won't you? Um, so if people, if investors are not interested in the full learning elements, they'll still have updates in terms of the, the project progression. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. So we'll do that every milestone. So any key event, planning out for outcome, for example, um, or just a regular update if we're just ticking along and delivering the scheme, such as through building, might be just a monthly or every two monthly uh, email just to let everyone know it's on track as expected. We're still in budget. Um, agent updates are still on track. This values are still as we expected, things like that. Perfect. Okay. Um, there are more slides. There's questions and answers. Um, but again, people can actually just get onto the platform, download the full investment deck and um, run through it in a lot more detail. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share with um, the with the community? Uh, only that if um, if people are looking at this and going, well, it's interesting, and I'm you know I'm on the fence, is is that they basically get in touch through whatever mechanism is most appropriate through simple crowdfunding, uh, if possible, sort of getting to us eventually and just saying, look, I want to ask a couple of questions, you know, what, you know, how are you, how do you address this? What's the benefit of this? What's the, um, why did you go for this one, given that you've looked at hundreds around Croydon, you know, why didn't you look at some of the other ones? Because there are very strong reasons why we went for this site above all others. There's, there's another one that I won't go into now, elsewhere in Croydon, where we basically got planning, but we're very hesitant about moving forward on it. Uh, it's, it's a similar site. It, it's not as high value. Um, and there are other reasons. So, you know, we've picked this for a specific reason, um, which is what I laid out earlier. It, it's an easy vanilla site with um, very reliable GDVs. Um, but any questions people have, please come to us and ask, because we should have the answers, I hope. And if we haven't, we'll be honest and tell you. So please do get in touch and, and don't sit there wondering. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of your time. And um, we'll address or will direct any questions that do come in um, to you. If for anyone listening, if you do have questions, the team are here to address them and they're very open to having a conversation and talking about their experience and background um, as a we. So however we can help, we're here to do that. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you very much.